Are you looking for a new reason to reinstall Mountain Blade 2 Battle Lord with the recent new patch 1.2.8? Well, let me tell you, I have the perfect reason right here. This is Banner King's Culture Expanded in combination with Banner King's, and oh my god, is it amazing. This is basically the ultimate Banner Lord's campaign, vanilla plus plus plus. On one side, we have the amazing gameplay mechanical updates with Banner King's. This adds in a whole age system. This adds in a complete rework to the economy which works amazingly with the workshop changes of the vanilla game now where you can actually store and sell resources to your heart's content it gives you lifestyles it gives you custom starts so if you want to you think you can become a lord from the get-go and have to worry about actually managing your own kingdom adds in religion to the game all with their own different bonuses adds in a completely brand new technology system to the game which is still a bit early progress but it looks amazing and you guys are going to have your minds blown when we actually dive in basically the the ck3 culture system it, it's incredible it adds a rework system to the how buildings work and completely changes up estates so you can make tons of money and honestly just so many more amazing gameplay features and then on the other hand we have the brand new banner king's culture expanded which is basically like the uh, cow radio expanded directly tied to banner kings now this mod adds in brand new factions tons of new armors using stuff like open source armory ancient civilizations and on top of that the banner lord expanded armory which are basically like the top three uh, armor mods that we have access to it adds in tons of new settlements to the map expands to areas you wouldn't think was even possible there's an entire like island fortress faction super cool on top of that because of that we get tons of new cultures and different sized kingdoms so we have many kingdoms that maybe only have one or two settlements and then we have some which are brand new and they have like six or seven and are real players to go and try and conquer all of Calradia. and these mods are now designed to work in cohesion with one another which obviously creates the perfect match made in heaven as the technology system of banner kings allows the units to advance through ages in the banner kings culture expanded and just kind of again have that perfect marriage so i'll, I'll stick my mod list on your screen right now so you can see exactly the type of mods you need and i will of course link to the install guide down below in the description so you guys can find all the mods you need to go ahead and play this but if you have the same mod list as me then it should work it's working for me as of when this video is releasing uh, and the install guide is, is pretty decent it just basically runs you through everything you need to know so let's first off take a look at all the brand new cultures that are making their way onto the campaign map so of course we have the vanilla six that we are known we have known for many years and then we move down to the brand new one so this is going to be nine brand new different cultures many of these do have unique abilities like the Syri. again they have agricultural traditions which allows them to produce more grain papyrus and dates and this is pretty important because banner kings completely reworks how the economy works in the game and of course this does also tie into the estate system and the new vanilla like warehouse system where you can kind of get the resources from your own workshops now and give them the input they need to actually produce Produce the goods and then go off and sell them in better in you know in more profitable cities to make more money so stuff like this is actually going to be important especially when you're going to be feeding your own settlements i love all the custom art and each faction does have their own unique law to them so if you want to find out a bit more about them before diving in you can unfortunately i think the Syri actually are the only faction right now which have cool custom abilities but again you kind of get a nice little taste of exactly what you know what we're going to be getting kind of across the board by just looking at how they're designed another cool thing as well is you do actually all have unique uh, um, kind of starting equipment as well so depending on what culture you pick you're going to be running into their own kind of custom setup for example again you can kind of see the different styles of them and you're going to be getting access to different abilities depending on how you pick you also have access to hundreds of new uh, custom abilities and also sigils so again if you're looking for something really individual you can easily find that with the uh, the mod setup that you know this mod does require again so many cool designs that you can mess around with you can really make this very very unique to however you want your faction to look then when you dive into the campaign you're going to be able to pick two things first off you're going to be able to kick your uh, pick your custom start so this is basically the type of uh, training you have and also kind of your beginning situations so for example i could start off as a indebted lord this will give me a lordship to begin the game with that's not a castle that's going to be like a lordship of a small village so that's going to give me more income but i'm going to have a massively reduced influence 
for the first five years of the game. So I'm going to have to basically spend the beginning parts of this game earning lots of money because I'm gaining taxes from that village, but I'm also not going to be able to do anything inside the kingdom that I've joined. So I'm not going to be able to vote on laws or request for more settlements to be on my side, but I'm going to be able to actually just have some fun, like managing a village and uh, able to kind of boost my scholarship and kind of just get to that mid game that little bit sooner. I could, however, play as a gladiator and this will mean that I start with mercenaries, food, uh, but my party size is reduced by 40%, again, for five years, which is actually quite a long time. However, I then get the gladiator lifestyle and i can really start working on that from the beginning of the game which again is a really fun challenge you know going around with more of an elite band of mercenaries going to village to village winning tournaments earning my fortune that way it's just kind of a cool system on top of that you can also pick your starting religion as well so again each of these religions have their very own law you can go ahead and take a look at and these religions will come with their very own bonuses again you can see kind of what officially uh you know who supports them and what type of faction so if you have an idea of oh actually you want to kind of lean towards that faction it might be a good idea to, to pick that religion i believe you can change this as well throughout the game but you're going to lose a lot of your piety but you build up so so again, that's something to keep in mind. And religions are really powerful in the game. You can get some massive boons to your forces. And as you can see, there are an absolute ton in the game to mess around with. Uh, again, I think you can change religion as you change kingdoms and you join different cultures. It might be a good idea to jump into the game and kind of just see exactly what everyone is about and what bonuses they give. But honestly, it's not the end of the world if you pick the wrong religion for the faction you want to play as. You can also, again, if you're struggling with like learning parts of the game, find this. There's all the different information you can see look at look at look at how much stuff there is in the game it's actually so incredible you can also again if you're struggling to find out about something go into the important concepts to learn more about them or going ahead and like learning exactly what certain bonuses do give you can do that right here as well which is super nice so here we go this is the brand new caradia plus plus a map right here for banner king's culture expanded this is going to be the main focus of that you can also get mods as well that changes up all the banners for vanilla factions which are, you know definitely definitely is a fun thing to do and something you can do if you want to. So here we have the island medieval fortress over on the left hand side. One of the coolest factions to play as these guys are a pretty small kingdom only basically leading as two car well like a city and a castle out here. But again these factions are going to be pretty powerful. They're pretty well set up in the defensive. Uh, but yeah you can kind of maneuver around obviously there is naval travel. These naval paths are going to be set though so there is only like one way to travel. You can't basically free travel at sea. Unit wise this faction does provide some pretty interesting forces again these are going to be kind of like an offspring medieval force so they start off with a pretty uh, i guess smaller army but they do expand out again with the age system we'll talk about in a little bit and again they have plenty of different variants for them but this is kind of your like traditional force right here they are lacking i think some missiles but you can get access to them this way and they also have a unit of like haskells which are going to be their elite soldiers up in the north here we again have a pretty larger yaldum right here they're going to be made up of three clans again pretty powerful and and again, their units are going to be, uh, you know, mainly all Viking-esque style soldiers, uh, just kind of acting as a different fawn in the side of the, uh, of the Valandians. They try and expand out. Then as we shift our way over again, new settlements being added into the game. And you'll notice plenty like of new settlements actually being uh, stuck into the, the map as well, which is pretty, uh, yeah, pretty cool if I do say so myself. Like if you look down here in the south right there, the map has like expanded doubt. This being a brand new settlement in Valandia, uh, which is cool to see adding in more detail. Again, map design uh, just looks great, right? It looks really cool with the aqueducts is down here. But this faction again is just an individual faction and they kind of have a hybrid of, of of units they have some of these barbarian units or i guess viking units and we also have some of the imperial units so again armies from this faction will be kind of building factions from both because they are kind of like an imperial colony in the uh, in the more like viking-esque settlements over here is pretty interesting in the heart of the sturgeon lands is we just have like an individual faction they're basically a castle in the forest that they've like repelled any attackers coming to fight them uh, and again this is literally just an individual castle there are no settlements attached to it there are no villages they just live in this castle and they kind of you know, occupy the woods which is such a cool kind of way of going about it down in the west here we have a faction with two settlements these are going to be the Mesa, and they basically hold up a pretty nice land down here in the, the richer parts of the Azerite desert again getting access to access to plenty of different soldiers so completely different setups right here and having access to really elite skirmisher cavalry is going to be absolutely amazing we have a big expansion down here in the southern parts of the map as well so you'll be able to see brand 
brand new factions are arriving down here. Lots of desert pandas as we rush away. And just more unique kind of units. Again, these are going to be more Egyptian style soldiers. And they again access have access to a lot of powerful settlements. Uh, and again, just kind of a completely different dynamic down here in the south of the map. Utilizing the, uh, the, the like, I guess the, the Caradian Nile here to produce crops and produce lots of different soldiers. The West also has a pretty big expansive empire. Again, as I said, there are plenty of powerful factions. Like this is, uh, again, a completely new player to the game. Uh, oh, and as you can see, they again have their completely new style of unit. Again, very cool units and more Persian style force. You also have these factions right here in the middle of the Azerai and the uh, and the Empire forces. And it's just such a cool kind of like island setup. Again, uh, very secure in that. These are a united colony. And um, they have really cool units as well. So if we jump over to them, you'll be able to see the type of units that they'll be bringing access to. Uh, they basically have these awesome kind of like Greco-Roman style soldiers. Uh, a lot of these Marines. Marines. These guys are all about melee, maces, and javelins, whereas these guys are all about shooting crossbows. And um, they're just kind of like a very standardized force, which is cool. So that is basically the gist of the K Banner King's Culture Expanded mod, adding in plenty of new settlements, plenty of new cultures, map expansions, and plenty of improvements as well, just to the base uh, the base game map as well. You'll be able to notice even more castles or more settlements or more just like floral design, trees, roads, etc. are going to be scattered throughout the map. However, we also have plenty of the Banner King uh, mechanics as well, which we haven't really touched on quite yet. Uh, so not only do we have the awesome new Dementor hierarchy, so we'll actually be able to see the legal ob ob uh, obligation of certain factions, who owns what dukedoms, and you actually have to try and convert this and get your legal claim on the settlement itself to basically make it so the settlement is happy with you, that you earn the right to actually control that, that settlement when you take it during war. It's going to take time to integrate into the Empire. We also have this brand new, basically new technology screen right here it would be cool if you could zoom out of it right now you are kind of locked in so as they add more it's a bit harder to kind of see exactly what you're doing but if you become the head of your culture you're going to actually be able to start researching technology for said culture so again you'll see right now these guys are in the Caradian age there are multiple so again this is going to tie into the unit upgrades as well so as you can see right here you if you unlock the half plate armor in the in Terence age you'll be able to actually start being able to produce half plate and similar armors this will then in turn if we go over to the uh, recruitment right here allow you to upgrade your soldiers you can see there are different cultural ages for units now and that's going to be tied in so some factions will maybe unlock the crossbow and that in that second age you'll be able to actually start using it in their armies which is just incredible Many of these other techs improve the type of buildings you can produce. So, for example, you unlock the mill, you can then start building the mill in your settlements and upgrading it. And this is just so beautiful, isn't it? Like, right here, you can improve the farmland output, which will then give you more food and allow you to feed your soldiers. And obviously, with the reworked system, it's just so impressive, right? Being able to unlock masonry and unlocking level two walls, you know, all of a sudden, these more advanced nations like the Empire, who have you know, kind of more, I guess, intellect and, and colleges and schools, well now we have to start jumping ahead with their technology and the factions like Britannia who are maybe a bit more stuck in their ways won't be able to have these improved settlements and these improved castles and just someone like all of a sudden this has just completely changed up how the game runs and it's just really really impressive on top of that banner kings adds in several new features when it does come to the skill tree so for example we now have scholarship theology and lead lordship again these provide you with plenty of different bonuses the scholarship tree has been completely fleshed out now definitely one worth upgrading theology is still in its infancy but again has up to 125 which is plenty and again lordship has very similar stuff lordship is great to level up because stuff like you get stuff like uh, reducing the time it takes to get claims on settlements so that means you can basically bring it into your culture once you convert it a lot quicker next one is accolade and again this is really useful so you actually have to knight your companions to be able to give them parties and stuff so having less influence to require to do that is pretty important the dementia limit being reduced so you can actually govern more all that stuff is super super good we also have education so you can read books you can choose a lifestyle and this will give you different bonuses so if I pick the mercenary lifestyle, for example, uh, this will allow me to then unlock certain bonuses to make it better. So again, while serving as a mercenary, gain the ability to recruit from the local minor factions in towns. I'll be able to get better units that bit quicker to help use that to fight different factions and kind of diversify my army.
army. Next upgrade, the Ransacker is amazing. Party owner, killing enemies provides 10% more shared battle contribution. That means more money, more battle loot. That means more influence, all that lovely stuff. And then as the captain, we go ahead and raid villages faster. Like, how good is that? And there are plenty of different ones. All these ones go ahead and, and kind of focus in on two skills that you want to level up to improve it. Uh, and it's all just really, really cool stuff. Again, if you take a look at the Gladiator one, right off the bat, more, more profit from bets. And you also gain more relations with notables, which is actually pretty important in Banner Kings. On the next one, you get notified where the next nearest tournament is going. I mean, you also get to double the amount of bets already. These are stacking. You're making plenty of cash. And then finally, you also gain influence from tournament victories. Uh, if you're serving as a mercenary, that's amazing. You also gain more renown from winning tournaments. Like, all that stuff is just beautiful. You can also do decisions in Banner Kings. And again, this is like acquiring books and cultures, unique ones like forming kingdoms. And then also when you're in kingdoms or you're part of a criminal empire, you can also do individual stuff like that, like improving your factions in certain areas. And then finally, we also have Faith, uh, which we kind of already looked at. But again, you can see the different types of rights here that these ones are doing, the type of stuff that are virtuous to this uh, which will give you more piety which you can find down on the bottom right hand side uh, stuff that the cults actually give for example uh, you can pay piety to again get extra bonuses to your campaign system and you can cycle through all these different uh, religions again to kind of explore with them the, the further of the system the imperial cult like it's just yeah really cool and all of that sounds amazing so much content to mess around with well let me tell you that is just the tip of the iceberg because when you join a set uh, faction and you start getting access to the kingdom tab you then all of a sudden can become a part of the king's council so you can be its stewardship and to change up the type of tasks that you're doing in your settlements you can also change the extended council as well to get additional bonuses you have interest groups that can try and push for certain things inside of your kingdom if it's less a peerage to certain smaller factions you can increase the like slavery rates of your faction change the laws so it's more laissez-faire or more authoritarian the diplomacy Diplomacy system has been completely reworked. You can now propose alliances, truces, declarations of war, trade packs. Trade packs are really cool. It basically removes the tariffs of caravans between settlements, which massively improves the mercantilism, which is a completely new stat in the game that, again, improves the profitability of settlements, encourages certain populations to come to settlements. Oh, yeah, did I mention there's populations in the game? And you even have your very own court system as well. So, again, you can really change up how things work, the type of lodging you have so again i could stick myself up to excellent lodging this is going to increase the amount of guests that can stay at my settlements and then give me other bonuses but are going to cost me like administration costs and other really really big things like right here i currently have a limit of influence of 75 so my influence can only ever go up to 75 i can do stuff to try and improve that i can also try and develop the economy or change up how i promote cultures i can yeah just like like look at all of this stuff it's just so awesome and it might be a little bit overwhelming but i think i feel like a lot of this stuff if you don't want to min max you can probably just kind of leave to how it is and it will run okay not efficiently but it will still run so as i mentioned that is just simply the tip of the iceberg there's a completely new rework to how settlements villages and estates work in the game definitely worth diving in for yourself i'm going to avoid talking about that because that could be literally a video all on its own i think i've shown enough to avoid this video being like an hour long talking about how just simply amazing this mod set is and hopefully i've encouraged some of you to read download Bannerlord and give this a go. As I mentioned, I would have put the uh, mod list on your screen for you to check out. And of course, if I can find it, I'll make sure as well to put the Discord link to the mod down below. I'm sure they'll be able to help you uh, with installing the mod if you're struggling. But let me know in the comments down below if you are going to be reinstalling Bannerlord to give this a go. I highly recommend it. It's truly impressive what the modders have done. And I really hope that people do go and support this mod and it gets massive because it deserves to be there. You know, there's so many different things I just didn't even talk about in this video. But if you enjoyed this drop a like drop a comment down below the more likes this gets the more people will be able to see it and the more likely i'm to do more content on it so if you want to see me maybe give this a let's play then then of course whack that like button and i'll see you guys in the next one